Hi, it's Sharif here with Engadget, giving you a video overview of the Fujifilm X-Pro1. This is a mirrorless retro style compact that sells for around $1,700 body only. And here you're looking at it with the kit that comes with three nice, lightweight and fast Fujinon lenses. The 60mm f2.4 that fetches $600 on Amazon right now. And this, the 18mm wide f2.0 and then on the camera a 35mm f1.4. Um, and those last two go for around $500 each. So all in all, you're looking at some pretty expensive kit. There's inevitably a lot of packaging to sift through with funny little extras like a notepad. And the box we received also included this leather case, which is sensible in the way that it gives you access to controls, but also perhaps a little bit too retro, uh, depending on your tastes. As for the camera itself, you really need to hold and feel something this expensive, especially because it makes such a bold impression. The blocky rangefinder appearance will wow some people, but it'll put other people off, especially if they're of the mindset that if a camera isn't a reflex camera, an SLR, then it ought to be small. Because this camera is anything but small. This is it up against my Nikon D5100. Um, and they're kind of similar sizes apart from the lens. And then here's my old Nikon F3, which also has very similar dimensions. So it's not as, not as small as we'd like, but then again, it's very light. Um, just 650 grams with the 35mm lens attached. And it's easy enough to use with one hand. I'll give you a quick tour of the controls. Uh, aperture is controlled directly from the lens, which is great. There's an old fashioned shutter speed dial with a lock to keep it on auto. There's no ISO dial, uh, but exposure compensation is nice and handy. And that's probably more useful to more people anyway. Um, also along the top, you have your hot shoe. And of course, there's no built-in flash and no separate flash came in the box either. Then we have our shutter release and a function button. And if I press and hold that button, you'll see that I can assign a bunch of different settings. And they make a lot of sense, especially for a one stage setting like um, depth of field preview. If you're going for more than one stage, um, a setting of more than one stage, then you may as well use the Q button <clears throat> um, here on the right. And you can use that for something like ISO. It brings up a full range of settings that you can select with the arrow pad and then with the scroll wheel. And if you look here, you can see the view mode button and the display mode button. And then over on the front, we have a little switch um, to control the hybrid viewfinder, which is one of the best features about this camera. You can switch between an optical viewfinder for immediacy and overall observation of your scene, um, or you can flip to the electronic viewfinder, which I'm struggling to do here, um, but which is usually easy to do, and which gives you more precise framing and focusing. In both modes, you can overlay all the necessary information on your current settings and whether you're exposing correctly, plus a histogram and also a spirit level. What's kind of harder to um, demonstrate on this video is the other big selling point of the X-Pro1, and that's Fuji's bespoke sensor. It's nice and big at APS-C size, and it has um, a random arrangement to its pixels that you don't find in other cameras, and which Fujifilm claims removes the, the need for a low-pass optical filter and therefore results in sharper images. And I do think that this, this sensor produces sharp images with a special feel to them. I wouldn't necessarily say that they're film-like um, because that's an overused phrase, but they are sharp and they have a kind of a sense of surprise, like the old days of film where you'd, you'd take a photo and then you'd have to wait to see what it actually looks like. And you kind of get that with this camera. Needless to say, there are many um, detailed reviews on the web uh, that go into image quality and more depth. And also there's plenty of sample images taken by pro stills photographers. And you can find those in my more coverage links. And they're at the bottom of my own review. Until next time, goodbye.